Oh, okay, perfect. Therefore, uh, we should talk a little about sport and training with congenital heart disease. And if I summarize the data that we heard since uh, one and a half days, then we try to get any kind of extrinsic help for, for the motor to bring into better conditions such as uh, uh, medication or um, uh, assist device or transplantation at the end. And uh, on this step, I would go back to the recommendation of uh, my friend Dr. Potapov, who said we should uh, try to, um, to, to, to use the intrinsic energy of the body to improve the motor, and in this case, probably just to improve our own motor and the motor of our patients. Um, therefore, for the first, we should ask uh, ourselves who needs uh, to exercise, how much, how often, and what type of exercise. Therefore, at first, we would discuss uh, a couple of very simple things, and if it's good for and practical, practical for um, everyone, and um, uh, how much exercise, the first question. For example, the guidelines for children. If you uh, look inside, then uh, we can find that this is recommended 60 minutes daily. It can be split, for example, four times 15 minutes, uh, moderate level activity, five days a week. Moderate level is breathe harder and feel warmer. It's not so difficult also for us. And moderate or vigorous physical activity include everything form of competitive sports. We can read it, we should not swim and skating, and also some things from the daily activity uh, can uh, also be used to reach this recommendation. Uh, and uh, the sports, what is sport, is mean all forms of physical activity, which third casual organized participation aimed expression on improvement physical fitness and so on. Therefore, I would say not electro scooter by move by yourself and then we can reach it for adults it is very simple also important in our uh, patients and it is one a recommendation class and evidence healthy adults age 18 to 65 need moderate intensity aerobic endurance activity. I would say you all are the best endurance uh, physical activity in regard to the interest for science because of the last presentation. And uh, 30 minutes on five days or 20 minutes on three days if you have vigorous intensity aerobic activity. Very short wording. Who can say that we are uh, uh, do according to the recommendation from the audience? Five, one, two. A couple of hands we can see. Therefore, of course, it's a little bit difficult to recommend something for our patients. Uh, it stay it remains only the words because we do not uh, make it by ourselves. And the other point is if you want to be better, then we can increase the 30 minutes on five days, for example, to 35 minutes on five days. And then we are on the best way. Okay, that it's very simple how much. Exercise and sports, and it is absolutely clear. Uh, it reduces the risk of acute decompensation at arrhythmias. The counseling should be based on the type of sports and anticipated effort levels. Therefore, we should think a little about before we make this recommendation. Sometimes we need testing to understand better the patient's conditions. Uh, but uh, they said, and this is the 2010 the recommendation from the ESC, ESC, the physicians have been over conservative in their advice, nevertheless. And uh, participation in regular exercise has a well documented benefit on fitness, uh, psychological well being, social interaction, and so on. Therefore, if we will if we'll improve the life of our patient, we should recommend them uh, to make sports. The other point also in Congenital. For example, this is a paper published 2018, distribution of the body mass index in the study population, and it is surprising that also in congenital heart disease with severe congenital heart failure, we have uh, uh, quite a large enough proportion of patients with overweight in tetralogy, follow in TGA, in Fontan patients. Therefore, they cannot do in general. Uh, really sports and they have overweight. Very difficult to make recommendation also for patients. What type of exercise? There are simple words, dynamic or isotonic exercise, change in muscle length, joint movement, rhythmic contraction. For example, as we can see here, 
It's very simple. Just go with this trampoline. It's extremely dynamic, and it is very, uh, very, very simple to make it by yourself. <laughs> or the uh, static or isomeric exercise. For example, this Atlans, they're standing since um, many uh, uh, hundreds in this position, and this is extremely difficult um, static exercise. But usually, these are both things together. Uh, for example, uh, they can uh, <laughs> jump a little, <laughs> and then... <laughs> okay, therefore, these two types of mixing uh, exercise that, that we have and that we should deal with. And what, for congenital, what should we recommend? For example, is it the best way for our patients or not? And this is a question that we try to discuss now. This is, for example, a publication with approximately 200 patients, uh, published 2015, where they uh, try to... Um, yes, the physical, psychosocial, and total quality of life in patients who make no sports, recreational sports only, or competitive sports. And it is not uh, difficult to recognize that the patients who make competitive sports had much more better quality of life in all these three parts of the questionnaires. In the same publication also, uh, the um, correlation of the uh, oxygen consumption and intensity of sports, one, two, three, six, seven, probably eight days per week. And of course, these patients who make it um, seven days per week had better physical consumption as uh, oxygen consumption as this group who were uh, in the point uh, position zero. Therefore, it should be recommended, that's clear. And for example, this is a good friend of me with Fontan, 25 years uh, uh, old. He makes such a kind of parkour, and it can be recommended for everyone on the way into the hospital, for example, in the morning. And, um, but if we look to, the, um, to this table, um, then what does he do? Gymnastic, yes, weightlifting. It is a static uh, uh, sport. What does he make? Bodybuilding should not be recommended, probably. It is in the middle field events. He is jumping a little bit uh, through the streets, orienting. He should find where, where he's going for and running long distance. Uh, therefore, uh, it is not so bad. And in this sample, we can see that he used all these possible uh, kinds of sport also in this short time period. And um, if we talk about cycling, then cycling is in the red corner. This for it's extremely static and high level of uh, dynamic component. Of course, if we talk about the cycling as a sport, it is not the cycling that we recommend for our patients and the low level of um, uh, capacity. But it is according to the uh, uh, exercise capacity, and it is according, uh, it can be checked also before we recommend some, what uh, should they do, what is um, acceptable for this patient. And for example, in this um, paper of Tucken 2011 and well known, we can decide it according to the maximal oxygen uptake, heart rate reserve, and maximal heart rate. And we go from the very light to very heavy exercise. And therefore, uh, this is recovery training or interval training, really training for sport, high intensity endurance training. And therefore, if we have this reserve for oxygen uptake, if we have heart rate reserve, increasing of the heart rate on the maximum of exercise, or just the maximal heart rate. Therefore, this is a recommendation for testing if you should give it seriously. And now, according to this recommendation, I would not read this table completely, just for every, uh, for, com for, for some of, uh, for kinds of um, uh, congenital heart disease, for example. What do we have for septal defects? like healthy, without significant restriction, like healthy. 
For example, this is the publication in the Polish journal. It is a member of the Polish Olympic team. The VSD, small VSD, of course, we know it's small VSD, but the diagnosis was found during the uh, uh, um, routine investigation, but the uh, sportman continues his training and uh, still remains in the Polish Olympic team. The other part of this table where I would take Tetralogy of Fallow. Tetralogy of Fallow, and this is again Sean White and his fourth Olympic gold last year. Tetralogy of Fallow, without significant regurgitation of the pulmonary valve, like healthy. I would say this kind of sport should not be recommended for healthy people. <laughs> but probably can be performed by someone with the tertiary of follow. <laughs> okay, this is another case, for example, it is a group of tetralogy, but pulmonary artery is 16 years old after repeated surgery with moderate pulmonary uh, uh, regurg, and this is a question, what is it? Equestrian therapy or way to the Olympic team? As for me, I would say it is not a therapy, it is a way to Olympic team, and also this is difficult to decide, should be recommended or not, but I think I am excited if I see these pictures, and uh, we just uh, have in mind that we should uh, check uh, and control the pulmonary regurgitation and the condition of the patients, but this is the excellent sample for very severe diagnosis, if it treated, corrected, correctly and on the observation correctly. It is a long presentation. I think we can, can go further. Nevertheless, it's less it's excellent sample. And the last one, also from this uh, table without the end, but I would talk about Fontan, but a little bit later. Not immediately now, because there are a couple of things that we should discuss before we go for this complex congenital heart failure, or the complexest congenital heart failure, the first step is the conclusion that it should be recommended, it can be recommended, but of course, that is summarized in this publication of Tuckan, these are very small groups of patients. We have no other group of patients, but the recommendations are mostly um, the recommendation of experienced physician, not of the randomized uh, double blend and so on. And Exercise intolerance is usually common in congenital heart disease. Because of uh, different points, this is congenital specificity, complex diagnosis anatomy, and individual pathological adaptation of the circuit under the uh, physical, um, under the exercise, and social aspects. They are also very important. The low level of physical activity, exercise not encouraged or allowed in, ch in childhood, overprotection or apathy in some schools, sometimes also in the family. Therefore, now I go to a couple of pictures that I get from, our, from uh, Dr. Voile during he prepared his, um, his um, uh, doctor arbeit, his uh, promotion work, and he analyzed, I would say it is pretty big group of, pa of patients, about 400 patients with questionary, and it was a group with different age that you can see here, men and women, about 400 patients in all age groups, and that we could see on the exercise capacity testing that the capacity reduced with the age in all categories of patients, from the young to the adult, but also it is not more so good in patients where we would expect good capacity, about 30 years of age. We know this problem in congenital, nevertheless it was uh, shown in this uh, patient's population. What is interesting in this group? For example, if you compare um, ex exercise capacity and divide it between normal and severe reduced, that we have the patients with complex, I'm sorry, uh, with complex, uh, there's no uh, colors there given, complex and non-complex congenital heart disease, complex were Fontan, atrial switch, Epstein, and cyanotic patients. But uh, the self-assessment may be good or bad, absolutely um, independent on their exercise capacity and also of severity of their, um, of their congenital heart disease. Therefore, we should look with uh, 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 more and more um, 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 
um, for, 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 for the situation and this patient, but sometimes it should be recommended in the group where we would not expect it. What we have found also, again, if we divide it between complex and non-complex congenital heart disease, what was the reason to not make sports? And usually it was requirements too high, no time, no interest. Therefore, not enough, I would say not enough um, uh, uh, support for this patient. But the patients or doctors is not more a question for this uh, group of patients. We all, I would say, and the families understand that they need it. It just should be helped to start with sport because usually they do not know what they should do. They cannot go to the swimming pool. They cannot participate on any kind of Olympics team expected these two, uh, these two um, well-known uh, sportsmen. The other point is, it is in German, uh, but uh, um, uh, the line, uh, it is comparison of these patients with congenital heart disease with the normal population in Germany. And uh, if you see, between congenital heart disease and healthy population, we have a problem in all groups of age and in all uh, gender groups. Yeah? Therefore, that's also clear. We are very deep in compared with the normal population um, uh, in their physical capacity and physical activity. Interestingly was also in this small study, then if we divide the physical activity according to their exercise capacity, between normal and severe reduced, that you can see here, normal and severe reduced, then the more interest and proportion of patients with an interest in a supervised sport group was in the patients with severe reduced physical capacity. Therefore, they understood that they need a little. We just should know what can we give them, which kind of recommendation. And um, interest in supervised training was found mostly in adult, not in children, as we can see here in percents. But the question is, is it already a little bit too late where we'll start with the training? Because why do they want this? They feel not more good, yeah? this is the reason. This is a very interesting paper where about 200 publications were summarized and uh, only 30 of them meet inclusion criteria to demonstrate that sport is good. But nevertheless, it is about 200 articles that are already road to this question, sports with congenital heart disease. And nevertheless, here are 600 patients in different age groups who were included in this analysis. And it was shown that after the sports, and usually it was performed about 12 weeks. Usually it was about 12 weeks. 70% of these old papers that were included uh, demonstrate improvement in their physical conditions that we can see here. It is followed to max from two, from two, and so on. And uh, therefore, in, um, uh, in the median, it was improved in mean about 2.6 milliliter per kilogram per minute over this short time period, six to 12, 12 weeks, mostly 12 weeks. And in these three pa uh, pu uh, publications, the improvement was very good, more than three milliliter per, per minute per kilogram, including this publication from 2015. Therefore, it is a good reason to go for this. Therefore, the second step in most studies Participation in physical active training was safe and improved fitness, and we recommend for patients with congenital heart disease to participate in physical exercise training. And now we try to go this way also in Berlin. This is a sample of so-called HIT heart in training. The cooperation since 2016 was stopped, unfortunately, for small children this year because it's a little bit difficult to summarize this patient under one roof on any kind of the day on the week. But the adult patient, as I know, uh, Dr. Ries can say yeah or not, are still, uh, uh, the adult patient are still by training. But nevertheless, it's very small group. And it is clear, 
If you want to go through Berlin, one and a half hours uh, using S-Bahn and then one and a half hours back, your interest to participate in sport also once a week go down over the time and very, very fast. And now, once back to the point where I have uh, said, I'll be back in a couple of uh, minutes, the Fontan. We know this picture, it's pathological principle, we know this limitation, reduced uh, lung function uh, because of different problems. We know that impaired endothelial function, uh, pulmonary, um, um, then chronic uh, chronotopic incompetence, missing preload, the main problem, uh, other factors. Therefore, the question is, does it make sense to plan training programs for Fontan patients where the pathology is so severe? There are two samples for home-based training. We talk right now that it's a little bit difficult to summarize patients on, uh, under one roof. And this is one publication, 2016, with good results. You can see here individual for each patient, VO2 baseline and final. This was the way for their training with controlling and quality of life, and it was significantly improved without to go out from their uh, apartment. And this is another one publication with similar design, but 30 patients, different age groups, six weeks home-based training. What they try to do, they try to improve their lung capacity with the goal to improve the flow through the Fontan conduit. That is extremely important for Fontan patients, of course, with very good result, with improved resting cardiac output, with improved um, ejection fraction, uh, and magnitude improvement uh, slope. Uh, these are the difference in this um, in the, um, inspiratory strength, inspiratory uh, power, or with a visit from visit one to visit three. Therefore, that was an idea in Berlin from heat to fit, Fontan in training, and we planned this in German Heart Institute. We talked to a sports medicine and charity for better program and for better organization. And we get the help from Kinderherz Stiftung and we decide not to try to summarize patient one, two or three times a week on the one roof anywhere for training, but to bring sports to the patients. For two years, not for six weeks and not for 12 weeks, two years home-based training and not at a study, but at the lifestyle. Therefore, this um, uh, ergometer go to every patient who participate in this program. Additionally, the endurance training, ergometer exercise bike, this is an individual program for every patient, and inspiratory training, inspiratory breath muscle training, 30 breathes daily, power breath with this uh, equipment. Two years, five visits, Feet beat for controlling, spear argumentary in between for testing of our patients, body plethysmography, breathing power to make it scientific as we can, quality of life at the beginning and at the end, and what we are hope for, increasing in oxygen uptake, exercise capacity, chronotopic competence, respiratory efficiency, and quality of life. All that we need, of course, we hope for this. And this is the network from the group that are now go by bike uh, around Berlin, but from Hamburg uh, up to Dresden. And there are 22 patients in these age groups. 50% of them are adults. And these are two samples for, I'm sorry, I bring it to running. Uh, And a little bit slow because of computing, but not because of the patients. And this is, <laughs> yeah. this is the way how they deal with it for the individual training. And um, we hope not only for good results in the exercise capacity testing, but also for a couple of change in their life. 
that we have also, we know it, but it's a little bit restricted, should we stay restricted by the time. These are the results that we already presented uh, uh, by APC this year. And this is increased from the visit, from the baseline to visit one in uh, exercise capacity in um, uh, oxygen consumption. And here is the inspiratory uh, pressure that extremely increased due to this brief uh, training. And uh, these are first visit after four months, and it means that the, group, the total group are already so far that we can say because they started not all together as well if you have somebody who participated in this program. That means that all of them are now over the visit one. Therefore, the home, we can say it's safe. The compliance is high. The interest is high. It is excellent effect, and we hope for the better results or for clear results after two years of this lifestyle uh, for this patient's group. Of course, we need other participants, probably not only in room uh, Berlin, but uh, in Germany uh, and generally. It is very simple to go with. And um, the key points, it also a kind of sports uh, should not be recommended for healthy. Uh, little or no restriction in, young, restriction in young patients. Detailed counseling regarding sport activities and care. It is difficult to decide sometimes what are the symptoms and what is lack of fitness. It could be Sean White again, I'm not sure, but I would talk for his activity. It is also cycling, and this is a red corner in our table. We should not do it as healthy population. Okay, for adults, they are adapted to their poor conditions. It is sometimes difficult to recognize, and that can mask uh, the symptoms until advanced change in heart function. And they have little stimulating factor due to social isolation. We should not forget it. They stay in their apartment and do not go out. These are many other questions that we have again. Overweight and so on. And should we start early? We saw from this analysis that the interest is a little bit too late from the patients. Probably we should go a little bit earlier to the patient to activate their interest uh, in making sports. Regular review in specialized center, check condition, check limitation, increase daily physical activity of patients to meet these public health guidelines where we're in all a group of age, under the healthy population, of course, within their own condition uh, um, tolerance. I thank to the children of our feed group. First of all, of course, with many thanks to Dr. Stefan Dirks, that is a manpower in this uh, study, to Dr. Wolle, to Hans Speck, to the Stiftung Kinderherz who supported uh, this uh, project, and to others who give us uh, the possibility to go further with this sport activity in children. Thank you very much for your attention.